Welcome to Unplugged, I'm Phil Dobby and with me today is Robbie Minicola who is the CEO for Hybrid Television Services. So uh, most people won't have heard of Hybrid Television Services but they will have heard of TiVo which is really what it's all about. Yeah. So uh, how long has TiVo been here in Australia and, and what does it offer the, the average consumer? Well the product was launched uh, end of July uh, just in time for the Olympics and um, it, uh, so July this year, so not very, very long. Mm. Um, and the reality is, is that it often gets compared to a PVR or Foxtel. Um, but um, our goal is to get people to understand this as being a media device, right. which is the best of digital terrestrial television, um, the outstanding TiVo user interface, and uh, the opportunity for broadband content, movies, TV, games and services. Right. So just a, as a PVR, I mean, there's a lot of competition in that space, isn't there? You've already, you've already yeah. mentioned Foxtel, which I think is about a, about a quarter of the, the market with their Foxtel IQ product being a yeah. slice of that. Uh, then you've got Freeview coming along as well, and then you've got top field boxes yeah. and all those devices that have been around for a while. So I, You know, I'm so glad that you said that. I mm. mean, because I, I, it, it's... I, I often think that every time I try to clarify the market, I, I have to have the same conversation over and over again. And it just it highlights to me that we're not communicating enough mm. and the consumer is misled. Because the first thing is, is that Foxtel has a 30% market share and mm. declining. But many people feel that that 30%, that 1.6 million homes, is 100% IQ and it's not. Mm. There's only 350,000 of those 1.6 million homes that have an IQ. The rest of them do not have PVR functionality. Right. So oftentimes people think uh, pay TV is synonymous with an IQ, and it is not. It right. is the minority. So the education so, job's a big job, isn't it? Oh, it's huge. Because you say PVR, and the average person on the street would say, what, what is a PVR? It, it's basically about pausing live television, being able to record, being able to uh, season past programs. Uh, it's about having functionality and time-shifted functionality it, at its very core mm. um, across the top field uh, beyond Wiz, uh, Foxtel IQ and TiVo. Where it gets differentiated is um, is it subscription or isn't it subscription? Is it, um, is it updated or does it go out of date? Does it have a great user interface or does it have no end user interface? Is there an electronic uh, program guide? Do I pay for it or don't I pay for it? Hmm. If I pay for it, is it integrated into the service or is it a clunky relationship? Um, but every time we talk about those things, we're talking purely about television. And the reality is, is that everyone is moving into the living room. Mm. Everyone is. Mm. And the reason why everyone's moving into the living room is because that's that, where people congregate. That's right. Right? Mm. And we can talk about second screens and third screens. We can talk about the bedroom. We can talk about the mobile. We can talk about the laptop, the computer in the study. But the reality is, is that more than 70% of the Oztam ratings come from the living room. Mm. So if I was a media group, the first thing I'd want to do is make for damn sure that I stayed in the living room and I kept the eyeballs on our product, whether it's broadband, whether it's time shifted, or whether it's digital free to air. So you're trying to get TiVo to not just be a TV device, or a device mm -hmm. for watching TV shows, uh, but trying to bring online content uh, and other media in, into the one box. Yeah, is that and, the and, idea? And, and that's our differentiation, mm. um, because the reality is, is that if I have pay television, I'm connected via cable, but cable does not make broadband. Mm. It's not transa transactional, it's not back and forth, it's not, it doesn't give me that on-demand experience. I mean, we can talk about 10 movies on demand, but that's not an on-demand experience. Mm. An on-demand experience is 600 pieces of content that I can click and I can get it when I want. I don't have to wait for it in a linear fashion. Um, but every TiVo in Australia is broadband connected. And if I can get my facts right, the latest ABS data just came out in June, and the growth of people going from 1.5 megabits per second in their speed grew from two, don't quote me, but mm. it's You're just over yourself, two million. <laughs> well, it's the AB, ABS data. Yeah. Uh, to 3.1 million. So it's grown exponentially. So the households are getting speed, they're getting capacity, they're getting broadband, mm. and they're getting wireless. Mm. Um, the reality is, though, is if I'm still looking at digital television, or I've still got pay television, which is a linear thing, or I've got a PVR that God knows what time it's on, etc., and there's no functionality, uh, we're wasting it. And mm. you know who our biggest competitor is? It's not pay TV. It's not Beyond Wisdom, it's not Topfield. Our mm. biggest competitor is the telcos. 
is you can put your rooftop aerial into the back of your TiVo, plug in your wireless device and pick up your home network. It'll scan all the channels and now you have digital television. Uh -huh. and you will turn on your TiVo and see games, free games, free services. You'll be able to do things like order your pizza and ultimately order your groceries. You'll be able to buy movie tickets. You'll be able to buy concert tickets. You'll be able to um, see exclusive interviews. You'll be able to get all the digital terrestrial channels plus the best of broadband. So it's part of your job to try and forge those partnerships for those services Absolutely. that's going to be on. And across borders, because we're Australia and New Zealand. Mm. So part of my remit is to build the New Zealand market, um, as well as the New Zealand partnerships. TiVo has tried to uh, weave its way through a, through a number of commercial partnerships, mm. starting with a, with a number of competing TV, commercial, uh, mm. TV companies. And obviously, the competition between TV companies is fierce, but trying to find a common ground. Mm. Now you're putting a lot of other commercial relationships into it as well. Sounds like your job could become a bit of a, a political nightmare. So how do you how do you tread the boards uh, effectively and manage to, to maintain all those relationships so that everyone feels like they're get, getting out of it what they want to get out of it? I think um, it comes down to don't play, don't play the game, mm. and uh, integrity goes a long way. And at the end of the day, if you're always saying the truth. You don't have to remember your lies. Yeah. And I think in politics, the thing that gets you undone is that you're often saying one thing to one person, another thing to another, and you forget that and you get tripped up. Mm. And, 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 and that's a lot to do with the partners that we're with now and you know, with the Seven Media Group and TiVo Inc. Those guys are fantastic people. Mm. And I think traditions go out the window and, um, and uh, what's the word for it? Um, there, I think there's a level of... Um, of candidness that uh, follows the Robbie Minicola way that oftentimes freaks people out but they always know where they stand. Mm. They, they know when they leave the meeting that she's not bullshitting you. Right. And, and I, think, I think that sincerity makes people say, well that was a hard message to take but it's the truth and let's move on. Gee, you, you know, know I mean? for an American you could almost be an Australian, couldn't you? I am Australian. <laughs> I am. I've lived in Australia for 23 years and I became an Australian five years ago. That explains everything. So, that yeah, explains that's everything. why I say tomato. <laughs> I had to give up tomato. <laughs> right, I've adapted too. So uh, I guess the other one of the the other um, pretty hard areas for you, I, I would see as a big challenge, and we touched on it earlier. It's just training the distribution channels for mm. the product because it is new, it's exciting, but it's mm. also complicated. And there's so many messages. So how do you? And also, you're dealing with uh, you know a high turnover industry with with yeah. retail distribution. Uh, so you, you can train someone and they're gone the next day. Mm. So I know you put a lot of personal attention into this area. So what's the secret to, to trying to, to get the retail industry on your side and, and, yeah. and knowing the product well? Uh, one person at a time. Right. Not one group, not one chain, not one store, not one outlet. One person at a time. Every person you touch has to feel that you believe in the product and you have to get them to understand why they should believe in it. And it's got to be a decision that they make of their own volition. Not something that flyers, leaflets, spivs, uh, discounts are going to convince them that this is the miracle water for retail. That's not what it's about. At the end of the day, retailers are there to make a margin. And you know what? If we were selling chopped liver on a plate and that gave them a margin, tell them how to sell it and they'll sell chopped liver on a plate. At the end of the day, that's the way that they make their money and that's the way they survive. That is their business. Mm. So when we go to see them, we don't presume that TiVo is the piece de resistance and aren't you lucky to retail us. We presume that they need to make money and as much as they love our product or as much as they like Robbie being candid, they need to make money. Mm. And that's at the business level, at the corporate level. So what we've got to do is we've got to be innovative to say, how can we help you make more money? But you know what, the first thinking is, is oh, let's get, a, get them a better margin. I mean, every time we want to do uh, something great with a retailer, it shouldn't be about dropping our pants. It should be about saying, hang on, is there a way that we can help you sell TiVo and other things in your store? To me, you know what the buzzword is for 2009? Bundle. Mm. Bundle, 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 bundle. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yep. Because when I got so much money in my pocket, I'm not going to be comparing product A to product B. I'm going to be, be comparing a multitude of things I need to buy to a multitude of things I could buy. Mm. 
not it's not this one for one thing anymore. Two thousand and nine is about bundling and bundling effectively. And you're in a good position to do that because you've got a product which is all about transforming the home. So you mentioned yeah. chopped liver. Maybe you could start selling chopped liver with it as well. Maybe yeah, that's, exactly. Maybe that's, exactly. I, I, I tell you, in yeah. a couple of years, I want to be able to order chopped liver yeah. using TiVo. <laughs> Robbie Minicol, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thanks yeah. for your time today. No probs. Thanks.